Hello, welcome back to Not Financial Advice. Today I've got for you uh, a stock, Carl Zeiss Meditech, and it's a pretty interesting company and one that I've never heard of in the last three years or so of investing and researching stocks. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we will get right into this one. Um, so for those of you who've been following my uh, investment results and my nascent YouTube channel here, um, I appreciate you very much. Um, and recently, I've acquired some new subscribers and they've um, essentially some of you guys are uh, European, it seems. So um, as always, I invite you, if there's a stock you'd like for me to review, just leave its ticker symbol in the comment below. Um, I'd be more than happy to review it for you. Um, but, you know, from uh, a French luxury brand to um, Eurofin Scientific to now Carl Zeiss Meditech, um, you know, I'm really grateful to my followers subscribers rather, um, who are referring me to these really interesting companies I would have otherwise never have experienced. So let's, let's actually get into it now. Um, I'll ask you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we're going to start just sort of going over this company here. Um, so this is a weird one because I knew that I didn't know anything about it, but the name of the company rang a bell. So Carl Zeiss is a 200 plus, uh, year old, German conglomerate and um, they have a division, their, their business, their conglomerate is separated in multiple different divisions. Um, and the one that I think I would probably be most interested in would, in would be their Meditech division. And so looking at the price of this stock here, um, we can see that it's only up 140% in the last 23 years. Um, so not great returns from this stock whatever that uh, equals out to with a little bit of simple division, you could figure it out yourself. But um, taking a look at this stock here in more recent times, if we look at the trend line of this stock, it might be undervalued. And so that's what we're going to determine together. So it's an $87, uh, $87 stock in euros showing me the price in euros that's obnoxious so 87 dollars in euros is something like 92 92 us dollars something around that range so it's a little bit over a 90 dollars stock um and i'll be pointing out when i'm discussing something in euros versus usd uh out of consideration for any of my subscribers over there in europe so yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, this has been actually a pretty intensive video. It's taken about four or five hours to research this. Um, so it's the middle of the night here in the Midwest. It should be morning time uh, in Europe where some of you will see this. So let's just get right into it. Um, we can sort of see the price trend here as I already discussed. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's look at the max drawdown on this stock. And so again, this is a stock, um, it's, a, it's a medical technology stock. Um, we're gonna get to it in a second, but uh, essentially 75% of what they do is provide medical equipment and supplies for eye procedures. And then 25% of what they do is uh, provide equipment or devices or machines or technology for um, sort of nano surgery. So surgery on a, on a very small scale, that's not the exact term, but I think that, I think that you folks are familiar with what I'm describing. So this, uh, company, it's stock prices down 56% from all time highs. So let's get an idea of what this company is worth on a per share basis. Before we do that, I wanted to, I, I asked myself, why do I recognize this company yet? I've never looked at its stock. So it's a German company. Um, and I found a web page here for Zeiss Group US. Excuse me. So what we can see here is they handle a lot of stuff. So vision care, medical technology. Uh, that's the arm of this conglomerate that we're looking at today. But they also, the conglomerate itself also has um, some activities going on in 
uh, chips, semiconductors. Um, this is where I've heard of the company, photography and cinematography, hunting and nature observation. So they also do cameras and binoculars, um, and I believe scopes for rifles as well, as well as some other things. So pretty interesting here, but not, you know, just sort of some background, um, not really material to this particular stock we're looking at. So this is who Carl Zeiss is. And Carl Zeiss, uh, Meditech is, as I described, a company that does medical devices, 75% uh, for eye procedures and 25% for nano surgery. So um, again, it's about a 90, 92-ish dollar stock um, in, in US dollars. Um, so let's get in here and figure out what this company is worth on a per share basis. I'm sorry, that really threw me off. Usually Google would translate everything to US dollars, I thought. So this whole time I thought that it was 87 US dollars, but I'm getting understanding that this company's probably 92 US dollars. Um, we'll figure it out. So free cash flow yield of 2%, not good, not bad. Um, one thing that's awesome about this company they have cash. They have no. They have no net debt. No net debt on the company. That's fantastic. Um, getting back to getting back to this uh, company as well. This is going to be. Uh, this is going to be a mid cap company. So a European mid cap. That's why I've never researched it because it's a European mid cap. Um, so about um, eight and a half billion U.S. dollar market cap. Nine billion dollar US market cap stock. Um, coming back over to Qualtrum, as always, it's a, a software suite that I use to look at stocks. It's something I pay for, but not a, a platform that I'm affiliated with in any way. So fair is fair. I will leave a link uh, in the description below for Qualtrum if you'd like to check out the software yourself. So we know that we're looking at a mid cap European uh, medical stock or medical company stock. So let's take a look at the revenue. So when we look at the revenue, right off the bat, what we're able to see is growth over the last 10 years of 7.7%. And so um, excluding the last couple of years, which have been weird, even if we look um, back five years, the revenue is starting to accelerate on this 200 year old conglomerates arm. Uh, here for Zeiss uh, Meditech. So the revenue growth rates accelerating over the last five years at 8.24%. And even over the last um, over the last two years, things are normalizing. So we're going to be using the 7.7% annual growth rate in our uh, fair value estimate moving forward. Um, but we're going to we'll touch on that a little bit more here in a second. But that is a check mark for top line revenue growth. So let's also take a look at free cash flow growth. Um, despite these many hours that I've uh, poured into researching this company, um, not exactly sure what happened there, and I don't love it. I did verify on Yahoo Finance um, that the data Qualtrum was using, because this is an international stock um, trading under different ticker symbols, depending on where in the world you're buying it. I made sure that I was looking at the right stock, and I am. So not exactly sure what happened here. Um, I have a couple ideas, which I'll allude to, but we can, I, I think we can throw it out as a rounding hour, rounding error rather, and just see that the free cash flow growth has been about 7% uh, a year, exactly 7% a year over the last 10 years. Uh, and so that's going to be for free cash flow growth. So this is another check mark. Um, looking at that weird year of 2017, you know, when I kind of look at this, I look back at 2016 and then I'll go back. Um, if I was to go from 2016, where I see $84 million in 84 million euros in free cash flow in 2016, go back 10 years, um, it was 50, 56 uh, million euros in free cash flow. So we're seeing, we're seeing good growth across all periods of recent time. Um, and we've seen, 
this probably is an acquisition. This is probably an acquisition. Another spoiler alert. Um, and it, this is a doozy of a spoiler alert. The only thing I don't like about this company is how much they spend to grow, which is um, called CapEx. Oftentimes, CapEx is a is a broad term that means that they need to spend money. They need to continually reinvest to continue to grow. Um, I'm not going to spoil that too much more, but they do have a lot of CapEx. So this probably has something to do with that. But at the same time, you know, this chart is it's good. It's up and to the right. And so just leave it at that i suppose um the free cash flow presence and growth is a check mark so let's look at some other things that matter cash and debt um we're not going to go into this but i verified this across multiple sources so they in the last three four five six seven eight nine yeah, so it seems like for at least the last six, seven, eight, nine years, they sort of have a, a policy of um, no long-term debt or zero net debt. So um, any amount of cash that they have in a well-established company with growing revenue and growing cash flow, any amount of cash that they have in the bank is just a plus. So this is a this is a check mark. Now on the company, uh, when it comes to dividends, got some numbers here for you. Um, so this this company, um, Zeiss Med Science, is paying out a one point three percent dividend. Uh, the one point three percent dividend is at about a thirty two percent payout ratio, and so this is in the checkmark category for dividends. It is in fact one of those checkmark for um for Zeiss MedTech. So their dividends have grown at 10.7% over the last 10 years. So this is definitely a dividend growth company. Um like I said about a 32% payout ratio, uh starting yield of around 1.3%. Looks really good. So we're going to keep on taking a look. Um we can take a look at expenses here. So each and every single year, their expenses are in CapEx are going up. So that's an X. Capital intensive companies are rough, especially when you're talking about um, higher higher for longer interest rates, things of that nature. It's, it's a bit of a liability. So that's an X when it comes to um, expenses. Let's take a look at valuation. So over the last 10 years, um, our company that we have here, Carl Zeiss MedTech, um, is trading at a historically low PE. It's somewhere, um, looking at different sources, it's currently somewhere around a 25 uh, PE. So historically, this company's traded at a, at a huge, huge, huge valuation, a very high valuation. So on a relative PE valuation basis, that's going to be another check mark. Um, now, when it comes to their ability to take our stock dollars or bond debt that they sell and convert it profitably into cash, this, um, I think, allays some of my concerns with the CapEx uh, to an extent, but they have better than average uh, return on capital employed. So it's, in, in, it's an average of being in that high teen range over the last five years, um, right around 15 to 17%. So that's going to be a check mark on return on capital employed. Uh, shares outstanding. They've grown shares outstanding a little bit less than 1% over the last 10 years. Um, so I'm going to just give that one a pass and say that's a, a neutral. Not good, not great, not the end of the world. Not too bad. So these are some of the metrics that we needed to take a look at on Carl Zeiss um, Meditech. So again, um, we'll be able to see this later, but I did meticulously go through this and convert everything from euros into US dollars. Um, let's do that same thing with the price of the stock. So Google is showing the price of the stock at $86.76.
whatever the Euro version of sense is. Maybe it's sense. I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. So this stock is, uh, let's just see what the stock's trading for in US dollars. Is that's what I converted everything. So stock is trading at 94. If I would have figured this out, it might have only taken me two or three hours to research this. <laughs> this is actually trading right. At, it's a $95 stock right now. Okay, that's weird. So it's a $95 stock. Again, I'll just verify it. Carl Zeiss Meditech. Um, this is the exchange in Europe. It trades under... Um, trades under a different ticker symbol if you're buying it in the United States. So anyway, $95 stock. Um, let's not get lost here. So when we looked at the uh, revenue growth on the company, let me just refresh myself here. Over the last 10 years, it was 7.7%. And so those were the projections that I was using when I was doing my rough DCF estimate on it. 7.7%, um, just sort of doing a quick search. Uh, medical devices and equipment international compound annual growth rates projected to be between six and seven percent um, but i'm seeing faster growth with carl zeiss meditech uh, at about 7.7 percent .7 over the last 10 years so that's going to what we're going to be basing our assumptions on along with some of the things we learned here in the investor presentation so we're going a little bit more long format if you uh, appreciate that and you're interested uh, for me to just sort of show you the highlights of their investor presentation, like the video, subscribe to the channel, sure appreciate it. So this is where we got that information. So what we're looking at here, around 75% of their revenue comes from um, ophthalmology and around 25% of their revenue comes from microsurgery. I guess that is the... Um, official term. So this is this is something that I found to be really interesting. So not only is this a mid cap stock, but also 59% of its shares are held internally within the conglomerate Carl Zeiss. Um, that means that they're really invested in the price performance of the stock. It's generally a good thing. A lot of US stocks, 70 or 80% are held by Vanguard and BlackRock. Um, and sometimes you can get um, sometimes sometimes um, when the stock is held so widely by so many people and through so many different channels, it's harder to find um, inefficiencies in the market or mispriced stocks. Um, but there there are several benefits like the two I just mentioned with about sixty percent of this uh, company being held within its own walls. And so um, this is. They're showing here that they're number two in ophthalmology and number one in microsurgery. So that sounds pretty great. So additionally, um, I love I love the healthcare space um, because there's secular secular growth growth trends behind it. So people are getting older, and the older people get, the more healthcare they need. It's as simple as that. Um, but it's even more interesting. So healthcare stocks, you know, not only are they defensive, but because there's technology involved and because of the secular trends I described, it's also, uh, it's a defensive stock that has a lot of interesting growth properties to it as well. So I was very happy to take a look into this company. Um, and, you know, in looking at it, they describe the secular trends here. So aging of population and growing affluence, continuously increasing volume of cataract surgeries. So this is just absolutely fantastic. You know, as the world develops, um, more and more people are going to be able to be cured of these uh, curable but serious eye conditions. Um, and that just has a really good vibe to it. So I'm all about this. I'm all about this so far. So I did do a good chance I did, I did, I did take a good glance at looking over this and the things that stood out to me, I'll be able to recognize and point out to you, but basically, um, this is super important. So they get a quarter of their revenue from the Americas, a quarter of their revenue from Europe, Middle East, Africa, um, as well, but 50% of their revenue is coming from Asia and the Pacific Australia region. 
So that is likely the excuse or the answer for why the stock price has taken a nosedive and its relative PE valuation is so low over the last few years is because 50% of its exposure uh, is to the East, including China, um, where they had more restrictive policies over the last few years. And so certainly uh, less procedures were probably um, performed. So this is starting to make sense. I actually kind of like this distribution of their revenue. A quarter in the Americas, a quarter in Europe, Middle East, um, and Africa, and then 50% in Asia, where there's a lot of uh, population growth. Actually, I actually kind of like this exposure here. So this is really cool. Um, broad and diversified portfolio with a growing share of recurring revenue. So Looking at their investor presentation, back in 2002, 2003, only 9% of their revenue was reoccurring. And so these are going to be the supplies that are needed or potentially the software license for their micro technology uh, machines and systems and tools and applications. So be it, you know, these medical products as opposed to devices selling these medical products in the eye, eye care space or what have you. Um, whatever it is that they're selling 46% of their revenue mix is now reoccurring. That's a really good thing. That's, that's giving this, you know, healthcare defensive sector. This is giving even more of the properties of a technology stock. Super love that. Um, yeah. And so that was everything that we needed to see for that. So uh, let's get back over here and figure out what the price of, Carl Zeiss Meditech AG is worth on a per share basis. Sorry for the confusion earlier, but of course, we ran the numbers on this. 87 euros is actually 95 US dollars. And so when we take all of our data that we got from Qualtrum and we run it through this handy dandy uh, little DCF machine here, we come up with an average free cash flow in uh, US dollars at 189 million US dollars. Total cash on hand is uh, 8.5 million US dollars. Net debt, long term debt zero, um, 88.4 million shares outstanding. So remember that 7.7% .7 number and then that lower 6% uh, international medical device CAGR. So we had either you know, six to 7% and it's 7.7%. So what I've put in um, is conservative, I believe over the next one to 10 years growing at 6.5% a year in top line revenue growth, terminal growth rate of 4%. Um, it's medical, it's international technology, inflation, growing demand. I thought that that was, usually I do 3% there, but I think 4% was fine. So doing a 10% discount rate on this stock, I'm showing that the value is about half of what it's worth. So about $45. And this was just so out of line with all of the check marks that I saw and the huge decline in the price of the stock. I was really second guessing myself and I did not, you know, the new viewer who was kind enough to ask me to take a look at the stock. I did not want to do them a disservice by any means. So, you know, the stock's down about 60% from its all time highs. And what I came up with is that this stock is still significantly overvalued. Now, uh, we're gonna check into this here. Th that This is possible, especially when we look at this historical 10 year PE. Um, so when we look at price to earnings multiples on um, Carl Zeiss Meditech, you know, there's times when this company is traded at a 50, 60, 70, 80 PE um, in recent times. You know, a company that's 200 years old with 7.7% with top line revenue growth, <clears throat> it doesn't deserve to trade at a 50 PE or anything north of that. So there, you know, there is in fact a chance that this company is overvalued. It's a $95 stock. I came up with about a, um, I came up with a, uh, what was it, a $46 $45 uh, DCF fair value estimate. So I went back and I looked in a few other places. And so these are some different sites um, that just sort of use an algorithm 
you know, there's there's no humans that are looking at, at this. This is just kind of automatically generated. But alpha spread shows a valuation of eighty two eighty two dollars. Um, there's a reoccurring article on Yahoo Finance through Simply Wall Street, I think, that's showing its fair value at um, at one hundred and fourteen U.S. dollars. So eighty five or eighty two dollars, one hundred and fourteen U.S. dollars, and then also Guru Focus. Um, I inputted these numbers here, um, but showing that the stock was worth um, the stock was worth twenty three U.S. dollars. There's a huge range there, um, <clears throat> but the average of these three online sources that I found were showing a value on this ninety five dollar stock at about seventy three dollars, and so when I look at everything in its totality the fact that they pay a dividend a dividend or it's a 200 year old company um, they're in a great space they have zero debt um, they have high returns on capital with all of those things in mind i think that a valuation um with a lower required rate of return is probably more appropriate and so when i run these numbers on a DCF basis, I'm just looking for a seven and a half percent return. Um, as we do have a lot of, you know, all the things I just mentioned, there's some really great characteristics about this company. The fair value estimate that I come up with is $78 on this $95 stock. Um, and so looking around the web, you know, some other places came up with about $73. I'm saying about $78 on this $95 stock. So great company, but it's still a little bit overpriced. Um, so to my new subscriber, thank you so much for the recommendation. Um, I think this is a fantastic company and I would, I would buy it right at $78 and 10 cents. I'd be a buyer of this company, but now it's just a little bit too high still, I think. So, uh, thanks for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.